Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 23rd of February and this quick look of the week beginning the 26th of February and it's been a little bit of a status quo for equity markets this week after the big rebound uh, seen in the aftermath of those two big weekly declines that we saw at the beginning of February. I think the big question at the moment is where do we go from here because ultimately while US yields have gone a little bit higher, the 10 year has been as high as 2.95% but in, more interestingly is that we've actually come off quite considerably from the highs that we saw in the early part of the week and as a result equity markets have stabilised and um, appear to be holding below some key resistance levels on the daily chart in the aftermath of the rebound seen in the middle of the month. We can see it best illustrated here on the DAX um, still below the 50% retracement level of the overall down move from the January peaks to the February lows. But what is interesting, I think, in this regard is despite the fact that we made record highs in January, is the fact that we actually look on course to post a significantly negative closing month for February. Um, we still have a number of days to go, so there's plenty of plenty of time for that particular scenario to not play out but ultimately the declines that we've seen have been much more prominent and prevalent in European markets than they have in US markets and I think the big question at the moment is where we go to next. Now the fact that we've backed off to 3% for US yields does appear to suggest that ultimately despite the fairly hawkish Fed minutes that we saw this week the expectations around what rates might do this year are still very much tiered towards two to three rate rises so far this year as opposed to the expectation of four because I think if there was an expectation of four rate rises we would see a much more concerted push towards that three percent level or maybe the trade is becoming a little bit crowded in terms of the three percent trade and maybe we are going to see a little bit of a pullback from the highs that we saw earlier this week. We're certainly seeing that played out in bond markets at the moment and that's been reflected in the rebound in US markets that we have seen in the, you know, in, in the latter part of this particular week. This, this is the weekly chart that we're looking at now for US markets. We can see we had a very strong week in the third week of February. We've got a little bit, still a little bit of negative um, still a little bit of negativity for this week but what we haven't done is we haven't pushed below beyond rather that 2745 area on the S&P and I think that particular level is going to be particularly important in the overall scheme of things as we move into March next week. If we look at the monthly chart we can see that despite the losses that we've seen in February we still remain very much off the lows of the month. And we have also seen a nice little rebound in the US dollar index um, from the levels that we saw at uh, the end of last week. But we're still within that trading range that we were talking about this time last week. We did make a marginal new low on the dollar index. If we look at it on a year-to-date basis, this is potentially a bullish reversal. But ultimately, I'm not going to get overly, overly bullish on the US dollar until such times as we've taken out this series of peaks through here. Now, we can, we can draw that on, on this particular chart here by a horizontal line all the way th through that level there. It's around about 91, give or take, um, give or take the odd pip or two. But could be could be the makings of a potential double bottom on the dollar index but we won't know that until such times as we're able to take out that 91 level. Now that also throws open an interesting development on euro dollar. Euro dollar um, finding a little bit of a top around about 125. Here we can see that on this daily chart here. Um, key day reversal there. Finding a decent area of support around about 122 and below that 121.60. So again a potential potential for a little bit of a, a top building formation at the moment but until such times as we break out of this range that we're in 
the likelihood is it's probably going to be a continuation of the sideways consolidation that we've been in over the course of the past few days. So what are we looking at for the week ahead? Well, again, the, uh, it's going to be inflationary pressures that I'm going to be paying, paying particular attention to. So um, it's the latest flash CPI from the European Union. Um, this week we saw um, the January prices confirmed at 1.3% on the headline and 1% on the core but we've also got core PCE from the US now that's currently trending at around about 1.5% this time last year it was 1.8 so there is still no evidence at the moment um, that we're seeing a pickup in inflationary pressures despite the optimism from the Fed minutes that we saw earlier this week so it's very much a it's very much an inflation uh, inflation um, perception for this week's data. But we've also got a whole host of February PMI data coming out from France, Italy, um, Spain and Germany. And we did see a little bit of softening of those numbers in the preliminary numbers that we saw in the early part of um, this week. So looking ahead to next week, expecting to see that slight softening confirmed. We've also got Chinese PMIs for manufacturing and services and they're expected to hold up fairly well but there is a word of warning with respect to these Chinese numbers they are likely to be affected by Chinese New Year celebrations so you could get a significant negative skew on these numbers don't read too much into them because of the fact that half of China is probably closed for Chinese New Year at the back end of February so um, th those are the key economic numbers that I'm keeping a particular eye out for um, in the coming week as well as the upcoming Italian election on March the 4th. Key numbers on the company front to keep an eye out for are Capital Group's full year 17 results after their profit warning at the end of January. Hopefully there's not going to be any new nasties coming out of that and the latest full year results from Standard Chartered Bank. Otherwise that's it for this week. Thanks very much for listening. It's Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.